So let us start. Uh, welcome all. Uh, myself is Naresh. Um, I'm a volunteer for IWSP uh, this batch. I'll be supporting, helping you out throughout this course. <coughs> so this is a, a sixth, a fifth batch of IWSP, um, Holistic Wellness uh, Transform Lifestyle to Revitalize and Regenerate. In fact, um, we have started our first uh, batch exactly one year back. Um, I mean, almost one year back at the same time. Uh, so <clears throat> I'll just have a quick introduction about our facilitator one more time because some of you have not attended the introductory session. Hence, uh, we would like to give a brief introduction about uh, the facilitators. Dr. Shukumar, Dr. Daya Deepananda. Uh, he is a doctor by profession, uh, medical superintendent. Um, he is, uh, you know, handling um, Ramakrishna Mission Hospital, Haridwar. Uh, he guides us in uh, all various aspects uh, in this program. Dr. Sushil Sharma, uh, who is intervention uh, cardiologist from Maryland, US. Um, he's been practicing in the US, but he's an Indian and practiced and studied and practiced in India as well as UK and then uh, practicing in uh, US now. Uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, Kupendra um, Kumar Sadhu. He is, uh, he supports uh, Swamiji in, in, in those uh, yoga asanas and pranayama uh, sessions. Uh, he's, he lives in uh, based out of Uttarakhand. He did his master's and diploma in Uttarakhand Open University. With this, uh, this is the agenda for entire 12 sessions of Dr. Sushi. Uh, we have already posted the same in WhatsApp group. I'll put it one more time today. The introduction one is completed and introduction two is going to be today, injury, inflammation, repair, healing, body, mind, and soul. That's going to be for today's talk. And this is how we will be proceeding. We have three sessions on diet, two sessions on activity, and two sessions on stress, couple of sessions on habits, and then one complete recap at the end. So it's going to be totally 12 sessions, one completed. We are in second now. This is a uh, agenda for Swamiji and uh, Bupendur. Uh, so there are totally 15 asanas we have identified after multiple deliberations and research by, by Dr. Uh, uh, Shokumar or Dayadi Pananda Swami. So 15 asanas, 10 uh, pranayamas, and then a couple of sessions at the end, uh, I mean, later part of the program on guided meditation will be done by Swamiji with the help of uh, the yoga instructor. So this, this is exactly what today's agenda. Uh, the, after me, it's going to be Dr. Sushil. He's going to talk about inflammation, repair, and healing. Followed by his question and answer. Request all of you, if, whenever you have a question, you type it in the chat box so that uh, our colleague, Mr. Subrato, sir, will take the question immediately after Sushil's talks. After Dr. Sushil's Q&A, uh, we'll be getting into uh, the asana pranayama session. Followed by uh, our Swamiji's uh, quick five minutes talk on the medical benefits of exact those asanas and pranayama. That's very, very important. That's going to be at the end. So stay till the end. That is important. Don't miss it. Followed by Dr. Swamiji's question and answer related to yoga, asana, pranayama. This is the agenda for the day. And we'll be putting every day this agenda in our WhatsApp group. So keep watch on WhatsApp group for every communications. Very important thing, I put this on yesterday's uh, WhatsApp group also, because it's going to be an experiential program. Dr. Sushil will be talking on a presentation, PowerPoint presentation, followed by the yoga instructor and Swamiji on yoga practice. It's going to be live, I mean, it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, practicing together. So it is important to sit in a spacious and quiet, quiet and ventilated room, be on a yoga mat, maintain a gap of three hours from your meal, Join the session through laptop or desktop. It will be difficult to join, uh, you, know, uh, you know, observe and follow if you're joining through mobile or tap. Keep your cell phones away from the room. Uh, don't have any disturbance in between this one and a half an hour. Please have a good internet connection. That's extremely important. Nowadays, whether you have a car or bike is different, but internet connection is extremely important. Wear loose, comfortable yoga dress so that you can switch on from Dr. Sarma's talk to uh, yoga immediately without any delay. 
put on your videos and as and when asked by facilitators otherwise you can be muted especially when you are doing practice when you are doing asanas pranayama it's important to put on your video and do it together so please read the handouts which i have put it today's handout i put it yesterday every day we'll put it one day i mean 12 hours before those handouts have a look at it once that will help you to follow the your uh, asanas and pranayama very easily so the same the session will be repeated in the evening also so if you want to join again in the evening you still can do that no issues so with this i will uh, hand over to uh, dr sharma dr sharma over to you uh, thank you very much narendra ji uh, welcome to all you share my screen okay so in the introductory session that i did everything that i'm going to expand on from here on in the next 11 session was the synopsis of that so one more thing before i go further because a lot of you have very specific questions and i request that hold off the specific questions get the general principles first and there's a reason for that the reason is when you hear something listen to something or read something you learn something new and and we call it knowledge but then when you go ahead and experiment with that knowledge and develop your own experience that really is the wisdom that you need once you have that kind of knowledge the wisdom then your mind will teach you and tell you what is the right and the wrong thing to do and that is much more enduring than listening to somebody or reading something so good thing is that whatever we're going to talk about right now we're going to give you ample time to experiment along with us and experience and develop your own conclusions and have your own knowledge and wisdom so before i go into the specific recommendations that we have for wellness i want you to understand these four mechanisms now i do understand that one or more or all of them may be new to you you may have not heard of them before but stay with me and i'll explain each one of them in very simple language so that we can all understand and why do we have to understand this because once we understand by diving deep what exactly is i'm doing to my body by putting something in my body or not putting something in my body then your understanding becomes much better so in today's session i'll be focusing mainly on chronic inflammation a little bit of endothelial injury now the circadian imbalance i'm going to take up again when i do the activity and sleep with you and i'll expand on that and autonomic imbalance also when i discuss about activity and yoga and stress reduction and habit change i'll be talking at length about autonomic imbalance in brain and cerebral cortex habit center and all those things so today we're going to focus on chronic inflammation so all these things some of you may have had or heard that some of your family member or you yourself had a blockage in the artery and that blockage was treated by the doctor with a stent and the chest pain was gone and now you have a stent in your artery some you may have heard had severe excruciating pain and ended up with a heart attack in the hospital some of you may have heard went in with chest pain and they found a lot of blockages they had to cut open his chest and put bypasses on the arteries now you have all heard of these kind of people and this can happen to anybody and we know that this is also a lifestyle disorder so where does this come from this formation of blockage inside the artery called atherosclerosis is also a type of inflammation so this is the inflammation that occurs inside your artery that then results in either a heart attack or for you to require a stent or for you to require a bypass so it all begins with that inflammation and that is why you have to fully understand what is inflammation how does it begin what do you do to prevent it and what is it that you should not be doing to prevent it 
So this is basically what happens in every cell in the body. Whenever there is somewhere an injury in your body, and, and we'll talk about injury outside, it results in inflammation. Inflammation is body's response to contain the injury, send different items to the injured segment to heal it and repair it and remodel it. So this is how all injuries happen. So let's take an example of how acute injury happen. We have all had either this or something like this happen to us in a life where you get a mosquito bite or you get a bee bite or you get bitten by a snake. And then you see what happens. The skin becomes red, it's hot, it's painful, and it's swollen, inflamed. And sometimes because of intense pain, you cannot move this leg and there is loss of function. So these are the signs of inflammation. There is pain, there is heat, there is loss of function, there is swelling, and there is redness. Now this you see on the surface outside and you've all seen it, right? But when it happens inside, there may not be pain. There is loss of function that you may not see, but the test may detect it. There may be swelling which may present as pain or may not present as pain and you may not know it unless the swelling has become very big. And there may be heat again which may not be perceptible outside and the redness may not be seen. But similar mechanism occurs in inflammation outside the body. Similar me mechanism occurs inside the body in the organs of body. So give you one more example. We have all at some point in our life have broken bones. I fell down from scooter, broke my clavicle once and broke my scaphoid once, twice I fell down from the scooter. So every time you break a bone, what happens? There's an injury, right? Whenever there's injury, there's inflammation. So what is inflammation? Inflammation is body's response of sending substances to the injured segment to heal it. So there is more fluid coming there, more blood flow there, more white blood cells there, more macrophages there, more proteins come to that place, more nutrients come to that place. All this gets packed up in that place. And that is how you get that swelling and pain and redness. But all that is doing is for it to heal it. So when you heal it, for example, when the bone edges are put together and then swelling subsides and they give you medicines for swelling, subsiding swelling, eventually you see the bone heals, repair and you recover. And this process is called acute inflammation. So inflammation is painful and that is what prompts you to seek medical advice. And then that inflammation results in repair and recovery. So in that respect, inflammation is good because that is the body's way of telling you that something has gone wrong in your body. I am inflammation. I am doing the healing. I will repair it and I will recover it. But if you keep doing it over and over and over again, then it is called chronic inflammation. You keep going in there, keep sending substances there to repair. And eventually what happens is through some different mechanisms, the repair becomes impossible. And then that inflammation becomes chronic. Chronic means you now have great difficulty in reversing it, healing it, repairing it, and recovering it. So these processes of chronic inflammation that go inside your body are actually what are causing your lifestyle disorders. And we'll, we'll discuss that in detail how. So I told you in chronic inflammation, the injury is recurrent. Inflammation persists, never subsides. And therefore the healing is poor, recovery is incomplete. And that organ that had the inflammation gets damaged. So let's see some examples. Acutely, you see this all the time. Those of you who are allergic, they know. The nose starts running. And why does the nose start running? Because inflammation brings in fluid. Fluid wants to get rid of the irritant. And that is why you have nasal discharge, sneezing, and headaches from allergies. Same thing in acute infections. You have infection in your lung, you get pneumonia. There's inflammation going on there, which is trying to fight the infection. Same thing in injury and burn. So this happens acutely, we saw. But there's also a chronic inflammation that goes inside the body. I've only mentioned four organs here, predominantly lung, liver, 
and heart and cancer. They're all these disorders are actually the end result of chronic inflammation, which has failed to subside in your body. So you see all these things. Some of you may say, doctor, I have a thyroid, which is underactive. Well, you have underactive thyroid, which is requiring now a medicine, right? And you take Synthroid or Thyroxine, and that's a supplement. But before you got to that stage, what had happened? Your thyroid gland had inflammation, had thyroiditis. And that inflammation went on and on and on. Unfortunately, you were not aware and you do not take measures to prevent the inflammation. Now you're left with a thyroid that has lost its function. And the only option left to you now is to take a supplement. Same way in the brain, chronic inflammation goes on and eventually it results in degeneration. And all the degenerative disorders come in that group, the Alzheimer's, the Parkinson, the multiple sclerosis. Same thing, you get inflammation in the eye. You get inflammation in the pancreas. If your pancreas become inflamed for a long period of time, they stop functioning, they stop producing insulin, and what do you get? Diabetes. Same thing in the liver. When the liver gets inflamed, what do you get? Fatty liver, right? So all these are inflammations. And then there is another type of inflammation, which is called autoimmune, where your own body fails to recognize your body organs treated as foreign, invades those organs, keep causing them to have inflammation, and you're left with autoimmune disorders like some ulcerative colitis or lupus erythematosus or some arthritis that you get. But all that really is chronic inflammation. So now you know all these disease entities that I mentioned, you can actually prevent them, control them, or reverse them by reversing, preventing, or controlling chronic inflammation. So that is the fundamental importance of you to understand what is chronic inflammation and how do you then take care of chronic inflammation. So let's go through some examples of chronic inflammation of internal organs. I showed you an inflammation of the skin, then I showed the inflammation of a bone that's broken, then I showed you the thyroid that gets inflamed. What happens inside? Because you don't see it. Unfortunately, pancreas and liver, you don't see the inflammation going on for a long period of time until the damage is done. And then you go back and your doctor tells you, oh, you're left with this damage and we're going to give you this medicine. You have no other choice. But there was a choice. There was a choice to be aware of inflammation. There was a choice to be aware of the do's and don'ts that prevent and take care of inflammation so that you would not have had to face the eventuality of chronic inflammation damaging the internal organ. So again, coming back to this, <clears throat> I talked about either you get a stent or you get a heart attack or you get bypass. I told you it's all atherosclerosis or atheroma or inflammation that comes inside the artery and blocks the artery. So, so let's see how does this begin? How does this happen? and why it is important for you to understand what I'm going to say right now in order for you to understand how you can then go ahead and prevent stent, bypass, and heart attack. So if you look at this, in the left panel is your body showing all the arteries. Arteries are the blood vessels that take blood and nutrients to all parts of your body. Even your skin has small arteries called capillaries. If you pick up your nail like this, see how pink it is, and you squeeze it and it blanches, and then you release it, it again becomes pink. So what happened when you squeeze it, you block the artery. When you release it, the artery fills up with the blood. Similarly, the artery is going everywhere. So if you block an artery, you reduce the circulation. You reduce the circulation, you cause inflammation. And inside the artery is a one layer called endothelium. This is one layer inner lining of the artery. Just like a pipe has an inner lining, this artery has an inner lining. It's very important to maintain the integrity of this inner lining, that one cell structure called endothelium, the shining inside of a pipe, the artery. So why is it important? So this is a cut section of one artery. So what we're doing right now is showing you there's blood circulation in the artery, 
but somehow this blood is loaded with cholesterol. This person repeatedly with his breakfast, lunch and dinners eats a lot of high sugar, high fatty food, which is very high in fat and cholesterol. And this cholesterol is bathing these arteries because once you have cholesterol that you eat, then it goes in your body, then it gets absorbed from your gut, it goes into circulation, it circulates through every part of your body. And this is the cholesterol I'm showing here, which is circulating through the blood vessel called the coronary artery that supplies blood to your heart. So what happens now? What happens is because of the other factors such as sheer stress or blood pressure or smoking, this endothelial lining becomes weak. And then there is injury to this, cholesterol enters inside, and then cholesterol causes inflammation. Inflammation makes foam cells to form. And now you're saying the beginning of the blockages following, for, forming inside your coronary artery. What happens next? Now, when it becomes very big, sometimes for reasons unknown to us, that blockage can rupture. Once it ruptures, then all that fatty material that is inside the artery comes out and it reacts with the blood clot in your blood and it blocks the artery completely. Now you can see with this blockage in the artery, no blood can flow through this artery. When the blood flow stops through that artery, now your heart is not getting any blood. Remember I told you when you squeeze this and stop the blood flow, it goes blanched and then you release it, the circulation starts. Same way in the coronary artery, when this blood clot forms inside the artery, right and closes the artery you have no circulation and now you get the chest pain and you get the heart attack so let's reverse it how did the heart attack happen because there was a blood clot inside the artery why was there a blood clot inside the artery because there was a plaque inside the artery inflammation why was there inflammation because there was smoking and high blood pressure and high cholesterol that contributed to the formation of this plaque, which is nothing but chronic inflammation. But doctor, I didn't know it. I was fine one day and suddenly one day I got a heart attack. Yes, before you got to this stage of the plaque rupturing and forming blood clot, you probably have been causing inflammation in your artery for 10, 20, 30, or 40 years. How? The lifestyle that you led which was sedentary, which was inactive, which had high cholesterol, high sugar, which had high blood pressure, which caused high salt and high blood pressure. All these factors gradually contributed to this inflammation forming inside the artery, enlarging and coming to the extent where it ruptures and causes heart attack. So now go back. Now go back and think about yourself. How do I find out I have a blockage or not? You don't need to do a test. Look at your lifestyle. If you're smoking, you're sedentary, you're inactive, you're not doing yoga, meditation, pranayama, you're eating too much sugar, you're eating too much fat, you're obese, you have high blood pressure, you have high cholesterol, you are forming the inflammation. You don't need to do any test to know that you are forming it. So now that you understand that all these lead to chronic inflammation and there is no discrimination, the, these factors that I told you, the high sugar, high fat, inactivity, poor diet, it is equal opportunity inflaming agent. It's not that it will cause inflammation in me and not in you. It is causing, you don't know it, but it's causing inflammation. So I told you what you eat, flows in a blood vessel. So I'm just showing you this. Look at this pipe. This is a very dirty water coming out of this pipe. This is an effluent pipe. So if this kind of material flows inside this pipe, what do you think is this pipe going to look like in 10 years? Because this pipe is has dirty water in it, right? This is what's gonna look like. The inside is gonna be corroded, inside is gonna be inflamed. And I tell you, those of you who have seen the angioscopic pictures of the inside of coronary arteries, and if I put you that little middle picture that I put here of the pipe, 
and show you nothing else, you will not be able to tell whether this is a pipe or this is a coronary artery with chronic inflammation, which is about to cause rupture and cause heart attack. So it's very important. What do you bathe your endothelium in? What is flowing in your coronary arteries? What is flowing in your coronary arteries? This is the pipe. This is exactly the pipe that's going to your heart and to your brain. So if this pipe gets corroded, like the pipe in the middle there, going to the brain, you get a stroke. If this pipe gets corroded, going to the heart, you get a heart attack, and then you need angioplasty, stand, and bypass surgery. So where it all began, it was chronic inflammation. Okay, so going to another organ. Now these days, a lot of people in India are doing a lot of tests for this fatty liver. And they say, well, where did this fatty liver come from? Well, bottom line, it came from too much fat, too much sugar. Okay, so when you add lots of fat, lots of sugar, to a certain extent, the liver can handle it. When extra sugar comes in the body, the liver says, okay, this guy has eaten more than he should have. Maybe he had two rasgullas more than he should have. And now I have to take care of this extra 20 grams of sugar or 40 grams of sugar that he got. What does liver do? Liver has a way of converting it into glycogen. It converts to glycogen and keeps it in the liver. So that tomorrow, if you're not eating or you're running and you suddenly need energy, the glycogen will be broken down to sugar and that gives you energy. So it's a good thing that liver stores sugar as glycogen. But there's only so much glycogen it can store. And then what happens after that? After that liver says, no, I can't store it anymore. I will convert into fat and I'll store it in the belly. I'll store it in the shoulders. I'll store it on the hips. I'll store it on the thighs. And that is what is extra fat. Unfortunately, when there is too much fat in the body, then same fat also comes and attacks your liver. And what do you get? Fatty liver. So repeated injury because of overstressing the liver with sugar and fat causes persistent inflammation. Some of this liver has a capacity to handle and heal and it does. And then it gets tired of doing that. And then you have a fatty liver. Now, a lot of people told me when I did this uh, IWSP one and two, doctor, we, we want to do an ultrasound to find out if I have a fatty liver or not. No, you don't need to do an ultrasound. You basically stand in front of the river, in front of a mirror sideways in your underwear, take your shirt off and look at your stomach. If your, if your belly is protruding in front of your chest, that means you have fat in your belly, which means there is fat in your omentum, which means you have trunkal obesity, be rest assured you have already started the beginnings of the fatty liver. You don't need an ultrasound. You just stand in front of the river, uh, from the mirror, take your shirt off and look at your chest and see how far your belly protrudes in front of the chest. And that is the beginning of the fatty liver. So where did the fatty liver come from? From chronic inflammation. What was the culprit for chronic inflammation? Too much fat, too much sugar. So now you, you understand you're connecting these things. So next time when I talk about diet and I talk about sugar and talk about fat, immediately, you know, oh my God, yes, now inflammation, liver damage, I understand it all completely. Same thing with uh, alcohol. When alcohol goes inside the liver, a liver has an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. It can break down the alcohol. And then if it breaks down, it breaks down to carbon dioxide and water and it's taken care of. But if you keep loading the liver with alcohol, more alcohol, daily alcohol, extra alcohol, the enzyme gets depleted. When the enzyme gets depleted, then this alcohol that goes inside the liver, which is not broken down by alcohol dehydrogenase, causes inflammation and injury in your liver. When this injury and inflammation happen for a long time, then you get liver damage and you get liver failure. So that is why we say too much alcohol is bad for your liver. What is the mechanism? Chronic inflammation. Okay, what happens smoking? Every time you smoke and you send these particles inside your lungs, the alveoli have beautiful thin lining, very delicate lining. And when you're hitting that with smoke, you cause injury. Now, some of that injury is healed. As I told you, every inflammation in the body is healed. 
but there is a limit to how much the healing can happen. So if the injury is persistent, the inflammation is persistent, there's poor healing, poor recovery, you are left with COPD, you get the lung cancer. So where did it all begin? It all began with inflammation. And what caused the chronic inflammation in your lung? The cigarette smoke. Okay, so that is uh, in short what chronic inflammation is. And actually in our diet, we have some wonderful things that reduce inflammation. So when I discuss with you the diet, I will be constantly mentioning to pro-inflammatory diet and anti-inflammatory diet. The diet that causes inflammation and is bad for you, the diet that improves inflammation and that is good for you. So all these things that you're seeing here, the uh, turmeric, the clove, the uh, uh, black pepper, the uh, cardamoms and these uh, chili peppers, all these Indian spices, great, great anti-inflammatory agents. So if you spice up your food, spice up as much as you can, multiple different spices, not just chilies, lots and lots of uh, turmeric, lots and lots of cinnamon, lots and lots of clove. Some of you are diabetic may have heard of this. Some people actually take extra cinnamon for treating their diabetes. And actually there's one more thing you may try again, some of you who have sugar with your tea, first of all, don't have sugar with the tea. But if that is what you need, do me a favor. Next time what you do is, if you take two spoon of sugar in your tea, what you do is you only put one spoon of sugar and then you put a pinch of cinnamon. So what cinnamon does is it has its own inherent sweet taste, which also multiplies the sweet taste of the sugar. So just by putting a pinch of cinnamon, first of all, you're getting the best effect of the cinnamon. You're also reducing your sugar by 50% because you cut down from two spoons to one spoon. Your tea will taste better, sweeter, and you cut back your sugar. But remember, what I tell you is zero sugar, but at least try to get to 50% sugar this way. Okay. So what is the best anti-inflammatory recipe? You all must be wondering, we talked about inflammation. So doctor, I just want to have no inflammation in my body. Give me what is the best recipe? I don't want to do this spice and that spice. Give me actual practice that I can do, which is anti-inflammatory. Actually, our whole program is anti-inflammatory program. So four important areas in your system that cause inflammation are diet, poor activity, poor sleep, excessive stress, and some bad healthy habits. I told you the healthy habits are sugar, smoking, too much sugar, too much fat, alcohol, all those things. So really our whole wellness program is geared towards preventing inflammation. And I told you that inflammation so that now when I go on to the next session of diet and I explain to you the diet, the do's and the don'ts, it'll be very clear to you where I'm coming from. Okay. So this is the natural detox. Now in India, there are a lot of people that go, oh, where are you going? I am going to go to such and such center for 30,000 rupees or 80,000 rupees for one month and I'm gonna be detoxed. Everybody goes, politicians goes, prime ministers goes, everybody goes for one month of this detox. You know, why do they need to go for one month of detox? Because they are treating their bodies with toxins for 11 months a year. Why can't you lead a detox, anti-inflammatory life so that you don't have to go for one month detox? What is the point in filling the, your whole body with filth and then going somewhere and cleaning and coming back and filling with filth again? That is a wrong lifestyle. The right lifestyle, which is the detox lifestyle is not going to any detox program. It is eating a diet, which is anti-inflammatory diet, leading a life that is active, living stress-free, having good healthy habits, getting good sleep, avoiding too many of these medicines like antibiotics, antacids, non-steroidals, painkillers, 
you take all these painkillers of arthritis, ibuprofen, these things, because you don't do yoga, because you don't lubricate your joints, because you don't stay active. Then you take this Motrin and ibuprofen, the non steroidal and that leads to acidity. Then you take antacids. So all these things you have to understand, they are the end result of bad lifestyle causing inflammation. Avoid toxins, avoid chemicals, don't eat processed things. Anything that is processed is processed and preserved with chemicals. You take a banana and you leave it outside. After three days, it goes stale. So why is it those are the Chiquita bananas that come from Colombia, they stay good for 30 days because they're radiated. So they're toxins, they're chemicals. All food that looks to you beautiful, clear, shining, and stays for a long time is treated with chemicals, treated with toxins. Eat fresh, eat whole food, eat healthy, eat local. So if you eat local food, fresh food, healthy food, avoid preservation, avoid toxins, avoid chemicals, you avoid inflammation. And then the biggest anti-inflammatory is yoga, meditation, and pranayama. So yoga is not just taking care of your joints. Swamiji will explain to you later all these asanas that you do where you're twisting your body and you're doing these pranayamas. You are actually also working your internal organs, your kidneys, your liver, your pancreas. They are also doing yoga when you do yoga, physical yoga and asana yoga. And meditation, the greatest anti-inflammatory medicine is meditation because meditation is really what relieves the toxins from your mind. And when the mind gets detoxed, everything gets detoxed. So then you don't have to go to a detox center. If you're meditating every day, you're detoxing your mind. If you're detoxing your mind, you're detoxing your habits. If you're detoxing your habits, you're leading a detox life. Why do you need then detox? You don't need detox. So that is how you take care of inflammation. All right, so what is the mother of all anti-inflammatory medicines? You'll say, well, doctor, can I take a pill or do you have some puriya or do you have some chevan prash or do you have some goli or somebody sells this thing, you can get 30 tablets for, for $50 and somebody sells this liquid, you put one liquid, one spoon every day and it's anti-inflammatory or you take one spoon of this concoction. No, no, you don't need that. You only need that if you're leading an inflammatory lifestyle. If you're leading an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, you do not need any supplements. For good health, you need zero supplements. You need a good anti-inflammatory lifestyle. So we are now going to talk about, in the next session, about the first anti-inflammatory medicine. And that anti-inflammatory medicine is food. Treat food as medicine. If you treat food as medicine and understand that food medicine is pharmaceutical, food is nutraceutical. Eat the food that has nutrients, the micronutrients that I'll explain to you, which are antioxidants, anti-inflammatory that reduce the, uh, the, the uh, injury to the organs. That is what you need. So what kind of diet that you can eat which will detox your body? What kind of diet that you can eat, which will be anti-inflammatory? What kind of diet that you can eat, which will prevent heart attack, stroke? What diet is gonna take care of my diabetes? What diet is gonna cure my chronic inflammation in my fatty liver? You have all these questions, right? Stay tuned. The next three lectures will tell you exactly what is anti-inflammatory diet which is pro-inflammatory pro and anti-inflammatory, what to eat, what not to eat, how to eat, how much to eat, and we'll discuss all that. So thank you very much. Always remember, you do take care of your health by going to your doctor and, and taking medicine that you're taking right now and doing all the tests, but add to that the self-care that we're learning today. When you combine healthcare with self-care, you get wellness. Practice IWSP, Whatever you learn today, let it sit in your brain, marinate. Some you may agree with, some you may not. Some may take time, give it space in your mind, experiment, experience, and then find out that best teacher is your own experience. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharma, for a very, very eye-opening talk, which really gives a new dimensions, especially I love that uh, approach from pharmaceutical to nutraceuticals approach. So that's what you know more how to do it. And I have seen people maybe not ready to ask many questions, but there is a one long question. So I don't want to talk in detail about it. It's mostly doctor says there is no heart problem, but obviously during the last one year, there is some COVID suffering was there and the mind has gone through a lot of uh, anxiety, stress. So the person is asking that uh, the triglyceride are 320, but doctor saying no issue with the value. So, but he still want your well advice so that how to get out of the problem he's facing right now, some chest pain time to time. So over to Dr. Sushil Sharma, please. Okay, so yes, this is, this is unfortunately a very difficult time for all of us. So this pandemic of COVID has caused a lot of problems, a lot of issues everywhere. And the biggest problem that pandemic caused, and Swamiji emphasizes that a lot, is the fear. And fear is the greatest contributor to stress. And stress is the greatest contributor to inflammation in the body. And then all this cholesterol goes up, triglycerides goes up, sugars go up, and that is there. So what is the answer? The answer, uh, somebody is, uh, so the answer is, can you mute everybody? Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. So the answer to that is, is somehow how to manage stress. And we're going to talk about that, how to manage stress, because COVID has caused stress for all of us and has caused all of our numbers to go haywire. So you're not alone there. And then doing yoga, meditation, pranayama that you're going to start with Swamiji and also all these good healing words and beautiful satsang that you're going to have with Swamiji, all that is going to help. And we are also going to tackle that in two complete sessions on stress management. You're on mute, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that very clear answer to that. But similarly, there is a, another interesting question. Someone is asking, I'm 60 now and have been overweight for the last 20 years. So is this too late? No, no, absolutely not. See, you are so lucky you're just overweight. You have, no, you have not done the end organ damage yet. You don't have blood pressure, diabetes, cholesterol, heart attack, stroke, cancer, COPD, none of that. So this is exactly the time. You are at the right place, at the right time, and welcome. And, and uh, we'll, we'll go through all that. Over the next one month, you will learn all that is needed to get rid of that belly. Thank you. Okay, so one more question, I think, uh, is coming from Mr. Bharat asking, having belly but not coming down easily, is there any qualitative test to assess myself, blood test or anything which will tell the positions where I am? I'm sorry, I, what is not coming down? I mean, belly fat is not reducing. That's a, is there any test to be done? So I think you will be talking about some test to assess yourself. So. No, that is a test. The, the, the fat in the belly is the test that there is too much fat in your body. So how do you get rid of that fat? Because if that fat stays in there, it's eventually going to lead to inflammation in the internal organs. So that is exactly what we're going to talk about when in the DASH program is actually designed to take care of that belly fat. <laughs> Be patient, experiment, experience, and then have the benefit. Yes, I think uh, that's all the questions in the chat box now. So. We can continue again uh, with Naresh for the next session. Thank yes, you, Dr. Sharma, for answering all these questions. Thank you for listening. Yes, sir. So we'll move on to uh, our uh, asthma and pranayama session. So um, request all of you to do it together. Namaste. Welcome you all to this yogic practice. So let's start today the first one with yogic jogic practice. So stand comfortably on your mat with legs apart, hands loose. Prepare yourself mentally and physically for the yogic jogic practice. So take a th three deep breaths first. 
deeply in, completely out, and try to relax your whole body with each exhalation. Deeply in, completely out. Deeply in, last one, and completely out. Relax. Let's start the first practice. And before you start, if you have knee pain, if you have back pain, go slowly. If you're a beginner, so practice it slowly. If you do not have any of these issues, so you can practice with me with the advanced level. Let's begin with the first one, jogging. So you have to start with a simple marching, simple and slow marching on your plates. Then start the jogging slowly with a slow pace. Make a press through your hands and keep jogging. Nice and slow. Breathe normally. Then slowly decrease your pace. Slow down. Again, you have to march. And relax slowly. Bring your hands down. Hands relax. Next, going for the second. Yogic, jogic. Second practice, again, we'll go for the jogging with the movement of our hands. So let's start this practice. Alternate combination of right and left. So you need to lift your right knee and left hand. Then right knee and left hand, alternately left and right. If you're a beginner, practice this. If you want to go for advanced, practice the next one with me. Let's begin. Simply, alternately, you have to practice. I'll show you from the side the same movement so you can understand better this one, how to practice. Last 10 seconds, keep going. Improve your heart rate. Last five, four, three, two, slow down, one, relax. So we have completed the second practice of jogging. Next, moving for the third practice. It is knees to the chest. So open your legs comfortably apart. Place your hands on your waist and slowly touch your knee to the chest. Lift your right and left leg and try to bring it closer to the chest. I'll show you from the side. This is for the beginners. If you feel any pain on your knees, on your back, so go with this, the first one. In the second one, if you're going for the advanced, go with the jump like this. Go with a simple jump and bring your knee as close as possible to the chest. Last 10 for the same. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax, bring your hands down. Moving for the next, the fourth one, the knees bent. So keep your legs close, place your hands again on your waist. And with the exhalation, you have to bend your knees together. Simply bend it as much as possible and then come back. Exhale, bend and slowly come back. I'll show you from the side. There is a no change in this practice. You have to practice the same for continuous 30 seconds. Knees bent and come up. You can breathe normally as well in this practice. Focus on your knees. Last five, four, three, two, one. Relax, hands down. Moving for the next, fifth one. The leg stretching practice. So this time, open your legs in the wide distance. Keep your legs three to four feet apart. The first leg stretching, the simple one. You need to bend your right knee, push your hips down and stretch your thighs. Then change, place your hands to the right and push your hips down again. Continuously. Right and left. Keep stretching your legs alternately from both the sides. Be comfortable and keep your feet grounded. Do not lift them. 
just focus forward at any one point and keep going for 30 seconds. Alternately right and left. Last five. Three, two, one. Relax. Slowly come back. Hands in the same position. Legs are in the same position. Moving on for the leg stretching too. This is the fifth, sixth exercise. So this time you have to change angle, twist your body right side and left side with this practice. So firstly, twist your right foot towards your right and push your hips down along with the hands on your waist. Right toe in, left toe out, slowly push your hips down and change. You have to change the angle every time, every single time. Right and then left. Change. Keep changing it, be continuous. Change the foot, direction of your foot, push your hips down as down as possible and keep changing it. Go for continuous 30 seconds. Just focus on the good stretch to your legs, to your hips. Last five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly come back. Hands down. Keep your legs close. Relax. Next. Seventh one. Open your legs and the wide distance again. So this is the exercise where you have to stretch your hands backward, make an arc and join your hands forward with a curve. So just look at me from the front, stretch your both the hands in the front, join your palms. And as you inhale, open the chest, arch the back, look up. And as you exhale, make a curve, join your palms in front of your head, inhale open. Exhale, bend. So breathing is important here. Go with the deep breathing. Inhale, open. Exhale, forward. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Keep breathing deeply. Backward and forward. Breathe as deep as possible. Complete inhalation. Complete exhalation. Last five. Last round. Relax slowly back straight. Bring your hands down. If you can stay in the same position. So eighth exercise, the side stretching. So keep your hands straight, open your hands to the sides. Inhale here. And as you exhale, start bending towards your right. Then change, inhale, come back, exhale, left. Be gentle to your body, be slow if you're a beginner. If you want to practice advanced, just go with me from the next round. Alternately, you have to change. Breathe in and breathe out. Always breathe out while bending towards your right and towards your left. Be continuous through this practice. At least 10 to 12 rounds each side. Till 30 seconds, you need to go right and left. Right and left. Last two. Right and left. Right side and left. Stretch your side body. Relax. Slowly come back. Open your hands, bring it down. If you want to relax in between, you can keep your legs close. You can rest for 10 to 15 seconds. Moving on for the ninth exercise. This is twisting. Open your legs again in the wide distance. The Trikona Asana practices. Open your hands. If you're a beginner, practice this. Open your hands and with exhalation, twist your body, touch your toe and come back. And again, with exhalation, twist your body, touch your toe and come back. Inhale always here and exhale while touching your toes, right and left. If you want to practice advanced, bend forward and practice continuously. 
alternately touch your toes right and left keep looking upward with every single twist and try to touch your toe keep going keep stretching your whole back your arms and head last 5 4 3 2 1 relax slowly come back to the initial position bring your hands down and legs close relax your legs moving for the 10th practice the backward bend and forward bend practice so keep your legs less than hip width apart distance almost 2 to 3 inches distance you require to maintain the body balance and here you have to go with the breathing while back bending inhale and while forward bending you have to exhale i'll show you from the this side so you can understand better how to do this practice bend your back as much as possible while inhaling and while exhaling try to reach up to your toes inhale back bend exhale forward bend be gentle to your body listen to your body always be comfortable while doing this this one stretches your whole body so keep breathing deeply in and out in out breathe in breathe out last three two one exhale and relax stretch your hands up bring your hands down relax open your legs comfortably apart just relax 11th one so we are going to practice the jumping jack so if you are beginner practice this keep your legs close hands to your outer thighs you have to jump open your legs open your hands and then jump again join your legs join your hands above your head and again jump come back then jump keep it close to your thighs so in four steps you need to perform this 1 2 3 4 1 2 if you want to do advanced go with me next the same practice you have to jump continuously and this jumping jack practice continue let's make it 30 be continuous last 10 keep going 5 4 3 2 relax so exhale long open your legs just relax we have the last one the 12th exercise it is hip twisting so in this one keep your legs close and open your hands in the front join your all the fingers palm facing downward so while changing you have to jump and change the position of your hands and your toes if your hands are going right so you have to keep your toes towards left like this right your you can see clearly observe my hands direction towards my left and toes direction towards my right so you have to twist your hips and back with the movement of your hands and legs just change the direction of your foot and hands and keep twisting your hips like this simply be comfortable if you are beginner go slow if you want to practice this let's continue together twist your hips along with me last ten Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Hands down. Open your legs. Open your hands. Close your eyes. Try to breathe deep. For complete relaxation, breathe in through your nostril and breathe out through your mouth. That will help you to instant relaxation. To get instant relaxation. 
So breathe in through your nostril, breathe out through your mouth, five to six times, then breathe naturally. So if you're a chair person, if you're not able to stand and practice with me, do whatever the possible movements you can do while sitting in a chair. And the second one, if you're practicing with me here on the mat, so do not practice right away with me. Firstly, observe my posture, how I'm doing the practice, and then gently start with it. So if you're not getting all the asanas today onwards, there is a no problem. We are giving you the handout as well as we are repeating the number of times along with you in this program. So you can get it easily, all the steps. So we are going to start the Sukhshvayama now. Be ready for that and practice along with me. So open your legs out, turn towards your left. Use the whole mat. Keep your legs closed. Place your hands comfortably along the side for support. And let's start with the ankle bending. You have to stretch your feet forward with exhalation and with inhalation upward. So while breathing in, you have to stretch upward. And while breathing out, you have to stretch forward. Keep stretching forward and upward. Breathe out, breathe in. Breathe out, breathe in. And just focus on your stretch and on your deep breath, on these two things. Keep stretching with a deep breathing and practice this at least 10 rounds. Relax. Then next, moving on for the ankle rotation. So keep your heels in some distance. Place your hands along the side and start the ankle rotation. Same breathing you have to do here. While exhaling, rotate forward. And while inhaling, rotate upward. So keep rotating here. Also 10 rounds. 10 rounds for clockwise and 10 rounds anti-clockwise. So keep going clockwise fast. Exhale forward, inhale upward. Breathe in, breathe out. Just focus on your breath with a movement and keep rotating your toes in a big circle. So it stretches your feet even better, your ankle even better. Last round, change. Now, opposite, anti-clockwise. 10, 9, 8, and same breathing you have to follow along. Exhalation forward, inhalation upward. Last five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Keep your legs closed, relax. The next, you have to move your knees, just upward and downward. Just flap your knees on the ground. Keep it together and keep doing it continuously. Keep the support of your hands to the sides. If required, keep it back. That's also fine. And just flap your knees on the ground, back of your knees on the ground continuously, at least for 30 seconds. You can get better blood circulation into your body with this practice, with the Sukhshvayama practices. Last 10, five, four, three, two, one. Relax. And after completing this, relax your legs. Couple of natural breaths, four to five breaths. And we we'll have the second one after completing this. Next pose is the bird of flight. So again, turn towards your right. Come to the center of your mat and fold your legs first. Fold your legs, join your feet, keep your heels close to the body. Grab your legs, straight back. If you're making a curve like this, so firstly open the chest, keep your back straight. Hold your legs and let's start the butterfly pose. Here you have to freely swing your knees as the wings of the butterfly. Find a comfortable rhythm and go with that rhythm continuously. 
imagine visualize that you are swinging your wings as bird flies to and keep stretching your hips your inner thighs with this practice focus on the stretch if you want to do little bit advance try to touch your outer thighs on the ground if not able to touch that's okay that's absolutely fine be gentle to your body listen to your body always and do comfortably this practice let's make it continue for a minute up to a one or two minute this practice to improve the mobility of our joints or hip joints make it continue if you can try to touch your outer thighs try to touch your knee knees on the mat last 30 seconds and keep your breath normal no need to breathe deep here just be breathe normally in this practice last 5 4 3 2 1 right. slowly slow down open your legs out place your hands back and just relax your legs simply relax your thighs relax your legs muscles and we are completed here with the upper body practices now moving on for the upper body sukshmana so now moving forward for the third practice in sukshmana the upper body practices let's start with the hand clenching stretch your hands in the front make a loose fist keep your thumb in and make a loose fist and as you inhale you have to stretch it all the fingers as much as possible and as you exhale contract them keep your thumb always in while exhaling so inhale stretch and exhale contract inhale stretch and exhale contract make your breath deep five and change now next is wrist rotation so while inhaling you have to rotate it upward while exhaling you rotate it downward two breathe in breathe out three four five and change opposite breathe in while rotating up breathe out while rotating down four three two one next change turn your palms upward breathe in and breathe out so while stretching your hands straight breathe in while bending your elbows breathe out three four five inhale open exhale bend now change open your elbows out inhale open exhale bend one two focus on your deep breathing three breathe in breathe out last one five and change stretch your hands upward one two and the breathing should be same inhale stretch exhale bend 3 4 and change bring your hands down for a while release the tension from your arms next one is the shoulder rotation so here also while breathing it in rotate upward while breathing out rotate downward so open your hands to the sides turn your palms upward touch your shoulders Let's start the shoulder rotation. Inhale, one, and exhale back. So inhale while stretching upward, and exhale while stretching backward. Three. Focus on your breathing and release the tension from your shoulders, from your neck with this rotation. Continue with the deep breathing. Last five, and change. Oppose it. Same breathing while inhaling. stretch upward while exhaling stretch downward four 
three, two, one. Exhale and relax. Bring your hands down to your knees. Relax your arms, relax your breath. Next, the fifth, Shukshnama, pulling the hands. So for this one, you have to go with the breathing along with me. Gentle to your body and always listen to it while doing this practice. Let's start. Open your hands from the sides. Raise your hands and just clap your hands like this. Inhale, extend them. And as you exhale, pull your right hand through your left one. And stretch your arms, stretch your shoulder with this. Inhale up and exhale down. Change. Now you have to go from the next side. Inhale up. Breathing should be same. And exhale down. Inhale up, four, and exhale down. Alternately stretch your right hand and left hand, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, last one, exhale. Now release in the same way, inhale up and exhale down from the sides. Bring your hands back onto your knees. Sixth practice, pushing the head and hand against each other for the cervical practice. So you have to breathe in while taking the position and hold the breath while applying the pressure here. So let's begin. Slowly, you have to practice with me. Raise your right hand. Keep it to your right side as you inhale. Keep your back straight. And as you hold your breath, try to apply the pressure towards each other. Try to push your head towards your left. And try to push your hands towards your right. Apply the pressure through your head and hands against each other. Then bring your right hand down with exhalation. Inhale, raise your left hand. Hold the breath and apply the pressure through your hand. And keep your head remain stable. Do not drop your head towards the left or right. Keep it stable and feel the pressure on your cervical region. Then change the hand. Inhale, three, hold the breath and apply the pressure through your right hand. Then change, exhale down, inhale four, hold the breath, apply the pressure and bring your all the attention towards your cervical region. That helps to reduce the pain. Then change with exhalation. You have to practice this four to six rounds like this. Moving on for the second. Interlock your fingers. Now we'll apply the pressure with the same breathing technique in the forehead and in the back of the head. So keep your hands with the interlock fingers behind the head, just back of the head. Inhale here and hold the breath. Try to apply the pressure forward through your hands and keep your head remain stable. Bring your all the attention to your cervical region with the whole breath and change, release, exhale. Keep it in the forehead, inhale here Hold the breath and try to apply the pressure back through your hands. Keep your head stable. Apply the pressure through your head and hands equally. And exhale, change. With the whole breath, always you have to apply the pressure. Inhale and hold the breath. Apply the pressure through your hands and head. And change, four, inhale. Hold the breath, apply the pressure. Again, same, try to push it back and through the head, apply the pressure forward and release. Slowly inhale and exhale, drop your hands. Last, we have the neck movement, the seventh one. So for this one, just grab your knees through your hands comfortably and keep your back upright. 
Let's start with the upward and downward movement. We'll also go all these practices along with breathing. So that helps to improve the flow of prana. Let's start. As you inhale, lift your chin up, push your head as far as back you can. And as you exhale, chin down, close to the chest. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Three. Exhale down. While breathing in, lift your chin up, push your head as far as back you can. And while breathing it out, try to touch your chin to your chest. Inhale, five. Exhale, down. Last round. Inhale, six. Exhale, down. Relax, keep your head straight, relax. Moving on for the next, the neck twisting. You have to breathe same. While twisting, just exhale. And while coming back to the center, you have to inhale. So you're in the center position, so breathing. Inhale here. And while breathing out, slowly twist your head towards your right side. And just look at the line of your right shoulder. Then change, breathe in. Come back, then breathe out. Twist your head towards your left now. Just look at in line of your left shoulder. Breathe in, come back, breathe out. Twist it right side, three. Change, breathe in and breathe out, four. Change, breathe in and breathe out, five. Last one, breathe in and breathe out, six. And feel the stretch to your side. Release, slowly come back and change. The third one, neck bending. So this time drop your head towards your shoulder. And while exhaling, try to keep your ear close to your shoulder. Big back straight, hold your knees. Inhale here. And as you exhale, drop your head towards your right shoulder. Slowly come back, inhale. And as you exhale, drop your head towards your left shoulder. Then change, keep changing it. Breathing in, breathing out, three. Breathing in, breathing out. Last two, five. Exhale. Keep your ear as close as possible to your shoulder and change breathing in and breathing out towards the left. Ear close to the shoulder and come back. And after these stretching, we are going for the complete rotation, the neck rotation for five rounds, clockwise and anti-clockwise. So straight back, hold your knees, drop your head gently. And again, you have to breathe here. While breathing in, rotate upward. And while breathing out, rotate downward. So as you inhale, rotate upward. And as you exhale, rotate downward. Practice with me. Three, inhale up, exhale down. Four, inhale up, exhale down. Be gentle to your neck. Five, inhale up and exhale down. Give a gentle rotation around your neck. Change, opposite. Inhale and exhale. Five, four, three, inhale up, exhale down. Two, inhale up, exhale down. Last round, one, Inhale up and exhale down. Slowly keep your head straight. We are completed with all the practices of Shokshrama. Close your eyes gently, place your hands on your knees and consciously feel the effects of all these practices into your body, into your all the joints, to your muscles. 
Now we are moving forward for the pranayama sequence. So let's take the position for the pranayama. Slowly, turn your palms upward, your back of the hand resting to your knees. Keep your back upright, shoulders and head relaxed. And from your both the hands, you can make initially Chana Mudra. You just have to touch your index and thumb tip and rest off three fingers straight in your knees. And then gently close your eyes. Feel the touch from the surface. Observe your seated posture. And mentally prepare yourself for the pranayama. And we'll start with the first one, Anulom Vilom Pranayama, the alternate nostril breathing. If you're a beginner, just look at me, look at the instructions. After that, you can practice. So in this one, you have to make Prano Mudra from your right hand. In this one, you just have to fold your index and thumb like this. And keep your rest two fingers straight. While changing it, you have to use your thumb and your ring finger. So this is the position of Prano Mudra. You can see that clearly. Now, so through your right hand, through your thumb, you have to close your right nostril and slowly intake the breath. Inhale through your left one. Then change the nostril, close your left one and open your right nostril. Then slowly exhale through your right and inhale with the same one. Change your nostril, right nostril close, open your left one, slowly exhale. Inhale with the same one. Then change your nostril, left nostril close, open your right one. Exhale through your right. Inhale with the same one. And remember, after every inhalation, you have to change your nostril. Make your breath slow and deep. Inhale. And change the nostril. Exhale first. Inhale later. And keep changing your nose after every inhalation. Exhale and inhale. Nostril change, exhale, and inhale with the same one. Your eyes remain closed and let's practice with me with a complete awareness. Keep changing your nostril, your nose after every inhalation. Make your breath Slow and deep. Be conscious of your breathing. How the breath reaches from nostril till the abdomen with your inhalation. And how it reaches and how it comes out from abdomen till the nostril with exhalation. Feel the length of your breath. From nostril till the abdomen with your inhalation and abdomen till the nostril with exhalation. Inhale with the same one and keep changing it. And feel that your every single breath, you're intaking the freshness which is present in the air, in your environment. So your each inhalation energizes your body and your each exhalation brings relaxation, helps to release the toxins from your body. And continue. So with this feeling, energize your body with each inhalation and with each exhalation, release all the toxins away from your body. 
Make your breath slow and deep, slow exhalation, slow inhalation. Keep changing it. Just be with your breath. Complete your circle to your left one. You started with the left inhalation, so you have to end with the left exhalation. Complete your circle through your left. Exhale completely and release the practice. Bring your right hand back to your knee. Eyes remain closed. Bring your attention inside and just observe how you feel. Feel the effects, the positive effects of these practice. So the next practice is humming B breath, Brahmri Pranayama. In this one, you have to vibrate your skull, vibrate your forehead, and feel those vibrations around your forehead onto your brain. And when you do this, you have to chant silently Ma sound. In the Hindi word, you have to silently humming B sound with the closed mouth. Do not open your mouth and feel all the vibrations here. I'll tell you the procedure, how you need to go. Just look at me. So take your hands up and through your thumbs, you have to close your ears gently. So you can't hear the outside sounds. Do not suppress it. Do not leave it very loose. Comfortably close it. Then keep your index finger to your forehead and rest of three fingers in front of your eyes. So your fingertips touches to the base of your nose. So take a long deep breath in first. Fill the breath completely. And with the exhalation, slowly chant like a humming bee. So like that, you have to practice. You can say like a Hindi letter word, ma, with a closed mouth and try to vibrate it or just vibrate it as a humming bee sound and feel all the vibrations towards your forehead, towards your brain. Let's take position. Close your ears, eyes. Take a long deep breath in and start. Mm. Mm. Then till complete exhalation, breathe in. Last one. Eyes remain closed. Bring your hands back to your knees. Feel the silence. Feel those positive vibrations around your forehead, to your nerves, around the brain. And feel the instant calming effect. Just be with this feeling. And you can practice this three to five rounds regularly. So keep your eyes closed. Be comfortable. And try to mentally recall 
all the practices that you have done today, the yogic, yogic practice, the 12 different exercises. Sokshyama, the seven exercises. And this two pranayamas, Anulom, Vilom, and a primary. And just feel the effects of all these practices to your body. Let's bring a lot of changes to your health. All the practices helps to improve your overall health and well-being. You're feeling good, positive, refreshed, and energized after completed all these practices. Slowly join your hands, rub your palms, warm up your hands. Generate the heat, the energy to your hands and apply this to your eyes, to your face. And gently open your eyes. Thank you. Have a good day. Sorry, we are exceeding uh, time a little bit. We still have a few minutes. Uh, Swamiji talking about the benefits of all these practices, whatever we learned today. Let us just spend a few minutes and then we'll close the session. Sorry for this delay. Just uh, hold on. I'm just running this video. I mean, this recording, Swamiji did it yesterday. The importance and benefit, medical benefits of these learnings, what we had today. Let us learn about the health benefits of doing yogic jogging, sukshma vyayama and the pranayama, anulom lom and brahmri. Before we start doing any asanas, we should do yogic jogging. Yogic jogging has immense health benefits and it's very safe if you want to go run outside there is always a danger of getting into accidents especially in situations like covid pandemic we are worried to go out so yogic jogging is done in our own place in a safe place so it's very safe to do yogic jogging when you do yogic jogging our blood supply to every cell of the body increases. It also makes your heart strong. It's a cardiac exercise too. It also increases the stamina and it makes you ready to go and practice the asanas further. So everyone should practice yogic jogging daily to make our body strong, to increase the stamina. When it comes to Sukshma Vyayama, it's very vital. Before we go and learn the asana, the postures, we should practice Sukshma Vyayama or the loosening exercises. In the Sukshma Vyayama, the main benefits we find is it makes all the joints strong, flexible, free from rigidity, free from all sorts of inflammation. In brief, all itis like osteoarthritis, like synovial fluid inflammation, all these things can be cured by practicing the Sukshma Vyayama properly. In the Sukshma Vyayama, what we do? 
we rotate the joint in all the angles complete ro rotation of the joints flexion and extension of the joint also sideward movement of the joint what are the benefits of sukshma vyayama it makes the muscles around the joint strong all the reasons for pain around the joints like osteoarthritis of the knee plantar fasciitis frozen shoulder is because of the weak muscles around the <coughs> joints so sukshma vyayama makes our muscle strong it also increases the blood supply to the joints so hi sukshma vyayama have got immense health benefits right from our wrist joint when you do the wrist rotation extension flexion of the wrist we are free from the pains around the wrist joints and your wrist joint becomes strong similarly you might have heard about tennis elbow pain around the elbow because of using the muscle in only one direction so when we do sukshma vyayama for the elbow joint stretching and flexion and extension of the elbow joint you are free from the elbow joint pain it makes your elbow strong similarly when we do shoulder movement sukshma vyayama for the shoulder rotation extension and flexion this also helps to make you free from the pain of the shoulder and frozen shoulder and rotation of the neck and also flexion extension and rotation makes your muscles around the cervical spine very strong so how you are free from cervical spondylitis <coughs> similarly when we do the sukshma vyayama for the hip joint we are free from low back ache it makes your posture the spinal cord strong it gives you proper posture <coughs> similarly when you do sukshma vyayama for the knee joint you are free from osteoarthritis of the knee osteoarthritis of the knee which is very common in people above 40 can be cured by doing the proper sukshma vyayama for the knee joint extension and flexion of the knee joint similarly plantar fasciitis pain in the ankle joint is very common so sukshma vyayama done properly for the uh, ankle joints makes you free from plantar fasciitis in brief when we do sukshma vyayama we are free from all the itis pain inflammation of the joints when you do properly you are now ready for the next asanas so why every one of us must practice sukshma vyayama every day before we go ahead and practice asanas now let us know the health benefits of pranayama when we say pranayama it's all about circulation of the prana shakti in the body proper circulation pranayama helps to circulate the prana shakti vital energy to every cell of the body when we think of anulom vilom alternative nasal breathing when you learn and practice anulom vilom properly it has got immense health benefits physical and mental mental diseases like anxiety depression sleeplessness all this can be cured by practicing anulom vilom properly it also makes your mind calm it balances the chemistry of your body which means the release of the hormones if disturbed can be balanced so why it has got immense benefits anulom vilom now let us learn about the health benefits of brahmbri brahmbri is a wonderful pranayama again 
it has got immense health benefits when it comes to mental disorders like anxiety depression sleeplessness so when gramre practiced properly people who had sleep disturbances problems like anxiety depression were relieved of from all those so in a way it brings tranquility tranquility samatvam physical and mental when it is attained you are from free from major diseases so anulom ilom brahmri practiced properly can make you physically mentally fit thereby making you free from physical and mental diseases thank you namaskar thank you so much uh, swami ji for uh, uh, the explanation of benefits of these asanas um so uh, subhrata sir do we have any questions for swami ji uh, so far i haven't seen anything okay so possibly people are just first time learning it right maybe you will have more in the next session so. right swami ji uh, you have any uh, closing comments uh, we are late uh, any any comments quickly please yeah we have heard a lot we have seen a lot it's all about practicing abhyasa is the word so slowly slowly regularly practice and enjoy the benefits it's all proven benefits by our own practices and based on the research papers we need to practice with that faith to get the benefits thank you have a good day There are some questions coming, but we will put those questions in the WhatsApp group, and then we'll get Swami Ji answered uh, for those things. Okay. So uh, with this, <coughs> we'll close for the day. Sorry, uh, we got extended a little bit. We'll take care of it. We'll try to manage better uh, the timing from tomorrow onwards. Again, in the evening, we have another session. Evening for India time. Uh, tomorrow morning for US time, we will have the same session repeating. So if you want, you still can join it. No problem in this. So with this, um, uh, have a great day and have a good night for your participants. We'll meet you again in 12 hours from now. Thank you so much. Bye.